a lathe cuts an eight inch by eight inch by four foot steel square bar into a six inch by four foot circular post. How much material was removed? All right, so first things first, first we have a math word problem. And anytime you're dealing with a math word problem, you always wanna use the rule of three. Read the problem at least three times. Make sure you understand exactly what's going on and particularly you understand the question, right? So how much material was removed? So the best way to solve any problem, okay, particularly a math problem, is to come up with some sort of model or visualize what's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at a visual kind of situation of uh, the problem. So here we have a steel square bar. Now the dimensions is eight inches by eight inches and it's four feet long. So obviously we have feet here and inches here. We'll talk about the units of measure here in a second, but this is a three dimensional situation. Okay, so we have a 3D object and we're gonna transform this steel square bar using our lathe. We're gonna spin this thing around and then we're gonna be kind of shaving off enough of this material such that we convert it or transform it rather into this circular post. And the circular post is gonna have the same uh, length. It's still gonna be four feet, but it's gonna have a six inch diameter. Okay, so the question is how much material uh, is going to be removed during this process. Now, real quick here, let's just kind of review something. And this is very important. So if I'm going from a to B, okay? I'm measuring uh, basically just distance, right? So I'm just as one dimensional. So from here to here, this could maybe be something like, let's say five inches long, okay? So it's linear, it's in basically one dimension, right? So we're going from here to here. Now, if I am uh, trying to calculate the area of a square that's five inches by five inches, this is the area. Now, of course, you can kind of think of area and surface area as being related. In other words, if I had a 3D cubed and I wanted to know how much wrapping paper was on that cubed, well, I'm not, I'm not calculating volume. I'm just calculating surface area. So basically, I'm finding the area of this uh, side, and then I just got to find the area of all six sides and add this up. But when we calculate the area, for example, of a square, we're gonna multiply the length times the width, so five times five, this would be 25 inches squared because we have inches times inches, so this is inches squared. So area, which is 2D, two-dimensional, will be in units squared, whereas uh, linear or just direct distance is in one dimension, so we're only gonna have like inches if we have units of measure, but if we're dealing with volume, something like a cube or a rectangular cube, that's a poor cube, I could do better than that. Let me go ahead and just give you a better idea here. Okay, so here, let's say this is a cube. So we have inches here, inches here, inches here. So we multiply, uh, or to find the volume rather, of a three-dimensional object like a cube, you're gonna have length times uh, width times height. So we're gonna have inches times inches times inches, so we have inches cubed. So when you're dealing with volume, okay, now volume is the concept of like how much water could this cube contain? You're gonna have, this is a 3D situation, so you're always gonna be dealing with inches cubed. And you need to be aware of that because one of the most common errors that students make is they forget the proper units of measure, and that is a big deal. It's not a little trivial detail. So just remember, distance is simply gonna be whatever units of measure you're working with. Uh, area will be in units of measure squared, and volume will be in units of measure cubed. And so here we're dealing with volume because we're dealing with a 3D situation. We're not dealing with surface area or area. So we need to think in terms of volume. All right, now what do you think is the obvious way to kind of figure this problem out? Well, I'm gonna to get to that in just one moment, but let's kind of quickly talk about a lathe. Now, this is just my little depiction of a lathe. I think I've used a lathe once and twice. Way back in the good old days, back in high school, you would actually take a class called shop. I'm sure they, um, <laughs> hopefully, they still have a shop class available. But, uh, you know, you get to work with tools and whatnot. But my father had a whole bunch of tools. He had, he had lathes and uh, wood lathes. There's different types of lathes. But basically, it's a machine. Here's like a motor right here. And this is just a real basic uh, depiction. A lot of you out there probably actually know how to use a lathe. So I'm certainly no expert here. 
but uh, I think I can get the uh, concept across to uh, people that don't know what a lathe is. So there's a motor in here, and then this thing is like a little chuck, and, and this kind of like uh, secures this object. So we're going to take this steel bar, for example. We're going to put it in our lathe, so it's going to be turned right here, and then this is like a little spindle part. So this thing is going uh, to get spun around. Right? We're going to turn the motor on. This thing, this little um, steel bar, for example, is going to get spun, and then right here, someone would rest their little uh, cutting, um, uh, you know, bar or whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't know the proper nomenclature. Nomenclature, and then we kind of, you know, you kind of touch this, and then of course this would start, you know, tearing into the material. And then of course, if I just kind of keep inserting this bar right here, I'm going to end up with some design that might look like this, right? So it's going to kind of insert like so. So this is really interesting. If you're curious about lathes, you're like, ah, I don't even know what this guy's talking about. Just, you know, do a quick uh, search. You'll see a lathe in operation. And they're very, very uh, interesting machines, especially like in woodworking. I mean, it's amazing how you can make all kinds of spindles and designs and whatnot. But that's the basic essence of a lathe, just in case uh, you didn't know what one was. Who knows? Maybe uh, some of you might be like, you know what? That's pretty cool. I think I might want to pick one up. Well, whatever you do, be careful because when you're working with this kind of stuff, you know, you got to be, you know, very careful because you can easily get hurt. Okay, so that is a lathe, and we're going to stick our steel bar into our lathe, spin it around, and convert it, or transform it, rather, again, into this circular post. Okay, so that is the problem, and hopefully now everyone understands what's going on. So how can we solve the problem? How much material is going to be transformed or um, removed from this uh, process? Well, what we have to do is say, well, hmm, we are talking about volume, so... Here is our starting volume. We have all this material. Now, uh, we're going to end up with a circular post in here. So some material is going to get removed. Well, how much material is going to get removed? Well, we're going to start off with all the volume, the original volume of this steel bar, and then we're going to end up with this volume right here. So if we subtract away the volume of the circular post, if we can calculate that, and subtract it away from the original volume here, or the volume of the steel bar, well, uh, the difference will be how much material was removed. And if you were thinking in those terms, that is fantastic. So now what we need to do is actually calculate the volume for each respective figure here. All right, which of course is going to uh, require uh, a couple formulas, but nothing too crazy. So if you've been away from uh, geometry for a period of time, or if you never even learned these formulas, they're not that difficult to work with. But let's go ahead and uh, get going with finding the volume of the steel bar. Now, we need to uh, kind of understand what the steel bar is, and this may not be super uh, clear in the prom, but anytime you're dealing with a math word prom, you always need to assume or, uh, you know, kind of assume the simplest version of, you know, the prom. Never over complicate a problem. In other words, saying, hey, I think it could be this, this bar could be tilted or bent. No, no. What we're dealing with is, is a three dimensional uh, bar. We know it's eight inches by eight inches. So what we're dealing with here is what we call a rectangular solid. Okay, a rectangular solid. So if you're asking yourself, well, I want to find the volume of this thing, but what is this uh, called in geometry? How would I describe this? You're not going to look up the volume of a steel bar, and you're not, you're not going to uh, look up the volume of a bar. So you need to have kind of a good geometric description of this object, and this would uh, be called a rectangular solid. Okay, so this right here, if we just look on this side, this is a rectangle. So it's a solid. So this, um, the edge or the uh, front and back of it is a square, but we would describe this not as a cube, but as a rectangular solid. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So now we go up and we go and check in in our geometry book, or we just look it up and be like, hey, well, what is the formula for a rectangular solid? And it is the following. So the volume of a rectangular solid is length times width times height. Now, the one great thing about dealing with three-dimensional uh, objects like a, uh, uh, a cylinder, which we're going to get to here in just uh, a moment, and a rectangular solid is that the, the volume formulas pretty much work the same way. And basically what that is is the following. So if you find the area of one of the edges, okay, and just multiply that by 
the height, you're going to get the volume. And it's the same idea with this uh, post. Okay, so if you might be saying, how do we find the volume of this, uh, this cylinder? Now, this thing right here is called a cylinder. What we're going to do is find the area of one of these circles and then multiply it by the height. So these volume formulas are pretty similar. But let's go ahead and calculate this. But before we calculate uh, this out, of course, I already did the work here. You have to be very, very careful because we have two different units of measure. So the problem is four feet, okay, it's, it's four feet long, and uh, uh, the sides here, are it's eight inches by eight inches, okay? So it's eight inches by eight inches by four feet long. So here we have inches, but here we have feet. So we can't use feet. Um, we have to convert either the feet into inches or the inches into feet. So it's just so much easier to convert feet into inches. Now, how do we convert feet into inches? Easy, just multiply by 12 because they're 12 inches in one foot. So four feet is the same thing as 48 inches. So you gotta be very careful when you're using formulas that you have the proper units of measure. Okay, so the length, again, is gonna be 48 inches, not four feet. The width is eight inches and the height is eight inches. So all we have to do is uh, break out our calculators and do this number crunching. So 48 times eight times eight will give us 3,072 inches cubed, right? Because here, this is inches, this is inches, and this is inches, inches times inches times inches, inches cubed. Again, you got to be very aware of what type of uh, units of measure we're dealing with. So this is the volume of this steel rectangular bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support to grow my channel. My whole mission is to try to reach people who need help in mathematics or just generally interested in math, but I can't continue to grow. My, my channel doesn't grow automatically. It grows by real people like yourself. So, you know, I... First of all, I want to just say thank you for just, you know, listening, taking your valuable time uh, to listen to me. And hopefully I'm delivering some sort of valuable content. I definitely don't want to waste your time. But if you really like what I'm doing, the best way to show your support is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification button as well. It really does help me out. It's kind of the fuel that keeps me going and it really helps me achieve my mission which is to reach as many people as possible, to help as many people as possible uh, to learn mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. And the next part is to figure out the volume of this uh, circular post. Now I'm describing this as a circular post and that's you know what it's called, or we could describe it this way. But again, if you're like, all right, well, you know, what, you know, what formula do I need to look up to um, find the volume of this circular post. Now you're not gonna look up circular post, so you need to have the correct uh, geometric description of an object like this, okay? And in this case, this would be a cylinder, okay? This is a cylinder. So you will look up the formula for the volume of a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is the following. So the volume is equal to pi r squared times h. Now, remember, we talked about that these volume, um, formulas work pretty similar. Uh, so basically, you're going to find the area of one side, and of course, both of these sides are the same. So just find the area of this and multiply it by the height. Now, again, we have feet and inches, so we're going to have to be mindful of the units of measure. But if you know how to find the area of a circle, what's the area of a circle? Well, the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So we're going to take that area of the circle and multiply it by the height. So the volume is pi r squared, r being the radius times the height. Okay, now uh, again in the prom, this is a six inch uh, circular post. So six inches is the diameter, all right? This is the diameter of this post, the width. So that's not what we need. We need the radius and the radius is one half the diameter. So that would be six divided by two, which of course is three. You gotta be very careful here. So the radius is three, but three inches. So now let's just go ahead and plug everything in. But there's a very important uh, aspect of this problem that we need to mention, and that is pi. Okay, so what is pi? Well, pi is one of the most, probably the most, well, one of the most uh, important numbers in mathematics. But it happens to be 
what we call an irrational number. In other words, this is a decimal that doesn't terminate and it doesn't repeat. In other words, this decimal starts off 3.14, goes on and on and on in a non-repeating manner, and it just doesn't uh, end. So we can never uh, use the full uh, value of pi as a decimal. Okay, all you're going to do is be uh, able to use approximations. And the, the minimum uh, approximation for pi that I would ever uh, tell a student to, or any person to use is 3.14. Now, the more uh, digits of pi that you use, the more accurate your answer is going to be. So this is just a kind of rough estimation, but it's just easy to work with for this particular problem. So 3.14 will be the value of pi. Okay, so we're going to use this right here, 3.14 for pi. And so uh, if you did, again, use more digits for pi, you would have come up with a slightly different answer. So you'll have to kind of be the judge of that. All right, so pi r squared, what's the radius? The radius is 3 squared times 48. Now here, we got to be mindful because we have to do powers first. We have an order of operations uh, problem. And not to uh, uh, kind of just blow through this part right here, we have to be careful again, right, that we're going from feet and inches. We have to use all inches here. So we're using 48 inches, not 4 feet. All right, so order of operations, we have to do powers before, uh, or uh, yes, exponents, powers before multiplication. So we have to take care of this 3 squared first. So 3 squared, of course, is 9. Okay, so now we have pi times 9 times 48. When we do all this number crunching, we get 1,356.48 inches cubed, approximately. Okay, again, this all depends upon how many digits of pi you chose to use. And now we can finally, finally figure out how much uh, material, how much steel was uh, removed on this lathe to transform this steel bar into this circular post. All we need to do is uh, subtract the difference of these uh, the area, right? Or the volume, excuse me, the volume. So we have the volume of the steel bar. We have the volume of the uh, post. So all we have to do is subtract the two. And what we're going to get is uh, 3,072 minus 1,356.48. And we'll come up with our final answer, 1,715.52 inches cubed. Okay, so again, this is a, you know, pretty straightforward problem. I mean, there is, you know, some number crunching involved, but I think uh, the deal here is that some people may, you know, forget, you know, how to uh, use volume formulas. And a big problem that, uh, uh, with, you know, figuring out what uh, formula you need in kind of the real world is knowing what formula to look for, right? So you have to have the correct geometric description of these basic figures, you know, things like pyramids, you know, uh, spheres, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you get into more interesting figures, you're going to have to kind of go beyond basic formulas. You're going to need crazy stuff like calculus to figure out the area and volume, all kinds of strange shapes. But that's awesome. You know, you may not be there, but if you are, you know, wondering what calculus is all about, one of the biggest um, uh, roles or biggest uh benefits of uh, calculus is that it finds the area and volume of all kinds of crazy objects. So that is kind of a little bit about calculus. So if you ever want to take calculus, you should, you should do it, but it's going to take you some preparation to get there. Now, if you are studying geometry, if you want to learn more geometry, I'm going to leave links to a couple of courses that I think some of you might be interested in. So one is going to be my full geometry course. I'll leave a link to it, of course, in the description below. But if you're kind of, um, you know, doing this prom or if you're kind of thinking, boy, I learned all this in school. It's been a long time. Check out my math skills rebuilder course. If you think you might be interested in relearning all the, all those uh, math skills that you once learned. Now, in that course, I go over basic mathematics. I teach you a ton of algebra and a ton of geometry to include a lot of the stuff that we're doing here. And I even teach you some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. So this would be a great course for those of you that might want to kind of relearn a lot of math. Now, from after you complete a course like this, you could get into more advanced algebra and ultimately get yourself ready to take calculus, you know, if you are motivated to do so. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.